Hello, my name is Stanislav Teslenka and here is the fifth part of our teapot tutorial. In this part uh, we will be focusing on uh, proper unwrap techniques for AAA assets. I will show you the principles uh, of placing seams and hard edges on the model and the best ways to uh, relax and arrange your UV shells to achieve uh, the best result uh, in further baking processes and uh, avoid uh, the majority of uh, artifacts uh, that are may caused by baking. I use geometry from Blender uh, and unwrap it in Rhizom UV. It's a, a standalone software uh, that is the best uh, unwrap tool in all industry uh, so i highly recommend you uh, to use this software because uh, it's uh, very simple and very powerful and i show you uh, the best ways uh, to handle with it so let's begin and hope you like this tutorial before we start in the unwrapping process, we need to uh, reset and clean up our geometry to make sure no, we will uh, get a uh, proper unwrap without any artifacts. So let's start by the, um, placing the origin points to the world center. We will need our 3D cursor for that. Just make sure it is uh, sitting in the world center. If not, go to object, snap and select cursor to world origin. Now we have uh, our 3D cursor in the world center. If we can start snapping the origin points of our objects uh, to this 3D cursor. Select all objects, uh, go to objects at origin and origin to 3D cursor. It will uh, set uh, all origin points uh, to 3D cursor and all transforms like uh, rotation scale uh, will be uh, driven from this origin point. Let's check if our geometry have flipped faces. Let's open viewport shading and enable backface calling. Now we see uh, some of our objects uh, become visible from the opposite side. But this is a tricky part because we uh, didn't clean up our transforms. Some objects look fine. So uh, let's do this. Go to object, apply and all transforms. And by doing so, we see our nose of teapot uh, have flip normals too. The second variant, how you can uh, locate uh, flip normals, go to viewport overlay and enable face orientation. Uh, then uh, disable back face calling uh, and uh, the normals that are flipped will be shown uh, with this red fill color. So again, disable back face, back face calling and enable face orientation. And you need to do this after you reset the transform of your objects. Let's select our flipped objects. Go to edit mode, press A to select all polygons. Go to mesh, normals and flip. And here we have uh, our clean geometry with the proper orientation of all our polygons. Now we can disable uh, the face orientation. Just check with the back face calling and uh, we have no issues on this model. Now let's clean and double check our topology. Uh, it's often uh, the case when you have uh, the double vertices, like uh, two vertices in the same spot. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I do this cut and uh, with uh, snapping on two vertices, I just move uh, this vertex to another and it will look like this. And my suggestion on every object that you are created and uh, just want to begin to unwrap uh, to do the following steps. Just go to edit mode, select uh, all vertices by pressing A, then press M to merge 
or just right click merge vertices and by distance you can adjust distance here and we will see that we get rid of one vertice uh, so let's do this process on uh, whole parts of our model and just go to edit mode and press a merge vertices and by distance and now we have our clean topology without these nasty artifacts so let's export our geometry to Rhizom UV. Just select the parts that you want to export. File, export, and in this case I select FBX. Just save it and give the proper name. I have already saved this. So now open uh, our Rhizom UV. We have two options, load and load with UVs. We select just load. To reset uh, the UVs that we already have. And let's start placing our seams. Just press F4 uh, to switch to select primitive and Iceland. Select our tipo tank. And press I to isolate it. Press F2 and uh, by double clicking uh, you will select uh, the loops. Uh, the core idea of uh, placing uh, the seams it's uh, to uh, place them uh, where you want uh, to uh, have a cut of uh, your uv shells uh, and uh, where uh, the geometry has the hard edges or edges closer to the 90 degrees uh, in the places where the geometry edges are more wider or close to uh, 180 degrees it's uh, better not to use uh, the seams uh, but um, in this case i put uh, the seams uh, in the back uh, of our teapot uh, just to divide uh, this uh, whole uh, tank uh, shell so it uh, can be easily unwrapped so I select again, pressing F4 and select uh, the UI island that I already have just to isolate it and uh, have uh, opportunity to um, uh, place uh, clear seams just by double clicking with shift. I add uh, the seams and press C uh, to um, make uh, a cut. So for now, it looks pretty okay. Let's press F4 and select uh, our uh, handle arms. Press E to isolate them. Then press F2 to select edges. Double click uh, on the edges and uh, we automatically uh, select uh, the edges that we want. Then, when selected, press Z to put a, a seam there. Now we need uh, to give them a cuts on uh, the edge. So we will have opportunity in future to achieve uh, the proper unwrap of them. Placing uh, two little cuts at the bottom uh, of these pieces. Then press Y uh, to unhide uh, all objects. Again, switch to F2, uh, select the object that we want and press I. Again, by double clicking uh, on the loops, uh, we will uh, paste our seams. Uh, I think that no need for seams uh, in the uh, center of this piece, just uh, uh, on the parts that are have uh, closer to 90 degrees geometry bends. It's looking like this for now. Uh, now we put uh, the seam just to uh, divide uh, the shape into a line when we will uh, be uh, unwrapping and uh, relaxing the geometry. Again, uh, I just select with F4 uh, 
and uh, shift hold on uh, the UV islands. Then by double clicking uh, and clicking with shift, I uh, select uh, the loops uh, that I want uh, to paste uh, seam on. It's looking like this for now. Just uh, select uh, and uh, press I and isolate uh, the this cap. Double click on this loop, press C. Double click on this loop and it already give us uh, the loop at the bottom. So it looks pretty okay. Just select uh, with F4 uh, this UV islands to make sure uh, I have uh, nice cuts on all parts of the geometry. Select the bottom as well, just to double check it. Uh, in some cases, you want to leave uh, this uh, circular shapes, but uh, I highly recommend you uh, to unwrap them uh, and arrange uh, in the line um, on your UV set. I will show how to do this in the future. Uh, so for now, let's uh, go to the nose part uh, with uh, shift hold on and just one left click uh, select uh, the um, edges uh, across the inner board and edges across the outer board of this nose. Just select them all, press C for make a cut. Then from the center of the inner part uh, we have this seam uh, just to avoid uh, stretching when we will unwrap this model and place two cuts on the edge. Uh, so we have the opportunity to unwrap the edge into uh, one line and place the seam at the bottom. The main trick is to uh, place seams in the most unviewable parts. So let's continue, uh, select our handle. In uh, this part, uh, we will place the seams on our rails. Uh, so we will have the uh, opportunity uh, to um, have a nice clean bag bake um, in these areas cause uh, they are pretty close uh, to 90 degrees um, and uh, we don't want them uh, to um, have some artifacts. Mm, if we will not place uh, the seams like I show here, it is a high probability that we will achieve uh, the nasty stretching and uh, some uh, not uh, fine looking bakes on the edges. So uh, we'll just with uh, shift and left click, uh, I uh, make the pass select the pass and uh, that uh, then press C and cut it. Do it uh, on all our rebels and edges of them. Next, next part will be to uh, place in seams uh, on our edges. They are 90 degrees, uh, so uh, we can just easily place uh, seams there without any overthinking about this process. So now uh, we will have the nice bake uh, on uh, this part. It's uh, always a common rule uh, when you have the geometry closer to the 90 degrees or have the sharper edges, um, you want to place a uh, seam and uh, have a uh, hard edge or different smoothing groups um, in these parts. We will uh, make uh, our hard edges from our UV seams uh, in the blender. Uh, so don't worry about this for now, uh, just uh, 
for now we need uh, to uh, place all the seams in the correct spots. So this part will look like that. Uh, place the two cuts in the uh, inner part, uh, so we will have the opportunity to unwrap uh, the inner parts properly. And uh, when we select with F4 this part, we will see that uh, we need to place two more cards in the bottom, uh, so uh, they will be hidden. And uh, now we have the opportunity to unwrap it uh, into one line. So this, this looks fine already. Now it's time to uh, place our seams on our bolts. And just uh, select uh, the bottom part of our bolt handle. <clears throat> With shift uh, I select uh, this bottom loop, press C, double click, press C, double click, press C. And now uh, we need uh, to select these edges, uh, so uh, they are pretty close to 90 degrees and will have uh, the hard edges uh, on them, so we need uh, to uh, place in there. The spherical objects is always a tricky part to unwrap, uh, so I just placed the seam with a shift and left click on the one side. Uh, and uh, for avoid the extreme stretching, I just give two more polygons uh, to the other side and uh, make a cut by pressing C. Uh, so it will be okay uh, for a small part like this to be unwrapped this way. Now I'm placing uh, the seams on the other boards uh, in the same way as I do at the previous one. As all seams are placed, now it's time to uh, unwrap our UV islands. Just uh, select uh, the geometry and press U and select again the parts and press U again. Just make sure uh, I selected all, all the parts and uh, unwrap them properly. Now with uh, the default settings, uh, just uh, click for the uh, quick packing just to uh, arrange uh, all details nice and neat in our field. So let's start by fixing uh, some unnecessary cuts and seams. Press F2 and select uh, this edge, and then press this button, uh, it's weld, or press W, and just get rid of this uh, unnecessary cut. By the default, uh, Rhythm UV uh, just showing up uh, some uh, stretching in this area. Uh, but uh, this slightly uh, blue or red tint is uh, pretty much okay. Uh, but uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, you need to keep uh, all your model uh, as uh, gray colored as possible, uh, so it uh, has no uh, just drastically uh, stretched islands. This is uh, our uh, bolts, and uh, for this case, this stretching will be okay, and we will leave it like this. So now we can start uh, the straighten up our UV islands. The UV island that has a fully quad structure, we can use these two buttons uh, to uh, straight them vertically or horizontally. I just select the second UV island and straight it up vertically. Also, uh, enable uh, the checker uh, to see uh, the stretching uh, and squeezing that are going on. It seems pretty okay for now. And let's continue our process of straightening up our UV islands. Just select this part, straighten up as well. So let's continue our straighten up process. Uh, this is a need uh, for 
better parking uh, is the first and uh, the second uh, the uv islands that have um, vertical or horizontal borders um, better match with the uh, pixels and uh, have a less chance to cause some artifacts um, on the uh, seams so it's always a good practice to unwrap uh, your uh, uv islands uh, so that uh, have uh, straight borders as i said vertical or horizontal and selecting this part uh, we will see that uh, we when we apply the straighten uh, function to it it has some weird results that we don't want uh, just uh, go back by Control z and we will use slightly different technique to uh, straight up uh, this part of geometry uh, we will do by placing uh, the uh, guidelines just uh, select uh, the one border and press alt v uh, to mark it vertical so when you uh, select it and press unwrap by pressing u uh, this edge will be vertical uh, and all other geometry just accommodate uh, to this now uh, here is uh, buttons that are responsible for that uh, then mark uh, select uh, with uh, f2 uh, and mark uh, by alt v uh, the second way edge uh, and again select all the geometry and press uh, u to unwrap select uh, top and bottom edge and press uh, alt t to make uh, the program uh, read this uh, as uh, horizontal lines so alt v for vertical uh, alt t for horizontal just continue to straighten up uh, our uh, uv islands mm. straighten up this as well It's pretty much uh, all the process uh, that uh, we want to uh, represent here is uh, how important to keep uh, all your uh, UV islands when you're doing uh, hard surface models, especially uh, to straighten up the borders wh wherever it's possible and uh, wherever it uh, doesn't cause us uh, some uh, unnecessary stretching or some overstretching. Uh, so keep in mind that mm, as much uh, as possible uh, you must keep your uv borders uh, vertical or horizontal just press f2 and select uh, the bottom and the top edges and press uh, alt t uh, to mark uh, them as horizontal uh, then when with f4 you select all the island and uh, press u for unwrap uh, it will uh, accommodate uh, all other uh, vertices uh, to uh, this uh, horizontal lines that were marked so we can mark this vertical as well select and press alt v to make this vertical Again, with F4, select uh, all the island and press U to unwrap it again. So we have uh, a little bit of stretching, but uh, in this case, it uh, doesn't have uh, so much impact. So uh, we can leave it like this. And I think it will be pretty okay for now. Just continue to straighten up uh, the UV islands that we can find. Uh, it seems uh, this part uh, by default uh, unwrap pretty nicely and uh, have the uh, right horizontal uh, edges of this UV island. You can mark them horizontal and unwrap again uh, to make sure uh, but it looks pretty okay, so uh, I will uh, don't touch uh, the parts uh, of the UV islands like this. So let's select the bottom edge of uh, our uh, screws uh, for the handles. 
and uh, just make them perfectly vertical or horizontal. Just mark by Alt V the vertical, uh, select all geometry and press U again for unwrap. The same scene with this part. For this UV Islands of our handles, uh, I think it uh, will cause us uh, the huge stretching if we will start applying uh, the vertical uh, lines uh, on uh, the bottom of the UV Islands, uh, as well as uh, these parts. Uh, but uh, we can uh, mark the central line and mark it vertical. Uh, so when we will be packing our UV islands, uh, these pieces will be arranged uh, perfectly vertical or horizontally. Uh, so uh, we, um, it's the best practice uh, to um, arrange all your UV islands uh, in vertical or horizontal manner. Uh, so it's uh, always uh, be better for uh, the packing process and uh, you can achieve uh, the better texel density and uh, it is more uh, efficient and better way uh, for all your uh, unwrap uh, workflow as well. So I just mm, mark uh, horizontal uh, some uh, bottom parts uh, of uh, this UV islands mm, just uh, to give it a slightly better uh, appearance when we will come to baking process. So we end uh, the process of optimizing uh, our UV islands. Now we can start uh, to uh, pack them properly. And by pressing F4 and select all the geometry and uh, pressing uh, spacebar and hold uh, the left mouse button and drag the left mouse button across the screen. I scale it up a bit. We pack them uh, by pressing the pack button with uh, default settings. Then we will see that we have uh, some parts um, that are too long and uh, all other UV islands uh, start uh, to uh, accommodate uh, to this, the longest parts and we were left with uh, too much um, UV uh, empty space left because uh, uh, other geometry uh, just trying to keep the texel density and uh, don't uh, rescale up or down uh, so the all parts will keep uh, the same texel density so what we need just to uh, separate this uh, three longest uv islands uh, by cutting them at the middle and by doing so uh, we will have uh, the opportunity to much tighter uh, pack all our uh, islands. Uh, just remember, deselect what you already selected uh, to uh, make the packer uh, pack uh, all uh, the other UV islands. So th this looks much better. We have uh, much uh, denser packing right here. So I noticed that uh, we have these uh, two rings that we can uh, cut and uh, make them uh, straight lines. So uh, they will uh, have much more uh, dense packing in the future. Again, quick pack. And we will uh, have this uh, nice arrangement of our UV islands. So let's change our texture uh, resolution uh, by uh, 490x6. Set margin and spacing to uh, I think 24 will be okay uh, for the 4K resolution. Uh, so it's the uh, distance between our uh, UV islands and distance uh, to the border of our UV set. Uh, 
uh, set uh, the uh, pack into gold. Uh, the number of iterations I set to uh, 100. Set the rotation optimization to 90 degrees. It's always better for hard surface models that uh, have uh, UV islands mostly in uh, like a rectangular shape. Prism UV have uh, two packing modes. This mod is uh, when you have a different Texel density and scale of UV islands, and this one uh, th that's average the Texel density of all UV islands. The optimal number of packing iterations uh, are between 10 and 30. Uh, it's no necessity to go higher than that. So uh, we will end up with this result after uh, our packing process. Uh, but uh, we have uh, this uh, huge bottom part that not be visible uh, in uh, the uh, game engine and during the gameplay. Uh, so we will uh, shrink it uh, a bit down uh, to uh, get the less texel text density to it and more texel density to other parts. Uh, so uh, I will click this bottom uh, packing options uh, and we will repack our UV islands. So we end up with this result. Now we can see some uh, empty spaces uh, all around. By clicking the fit button or press Alt B, we will fit all our UV islands uh, to uh, our UV space. Uh, so uh, to reuse uh, these empty spaces, we need uh, to divide uh, the longest uh, UV islands um, into halves. Uh, so uh, our packer uh, have more opportunity uh, to arrange uh, these UV islands uh, and uh, arrange them uh, in the more efficient way and just uh, we will reduce uh, these empty spaces by doing so. Uh, so we just uh, paste uh, seams in the middle of the our uh, longest UV uh, islands. Uh, so keep in mind uh, just uh, to do so uh, with uh, the most longest ones and uh, the most uh, thinner ones. So it will uh, not uh, have some huge impact uh, and uh, this uh, seems will not be uh, so visible uh, on all the model. Uh, so uh, click uh, the bottom pack option again. And I noticed that we can uh, straighten up uh, these parts, uh, the edges of it, so we have uh, much better bakes uh, on this part. So again, uh, select uh, the edges and press uh, Alt V uh, to mark it vertical, then F2 and U for uh, unwrap. And we have uh, uh, this UV island with the uh, perfectly uh, straight left and right parts. And let's do this uh, for uh, all other uh, parts like this. So we have a little bit of stretching, but it's uh, not so big and uh, it will be okay for now. So I just repeat this process uh, to uh, all. Uh, the same UV islands, just mark the edges and then uh, unwrap them. Let's uh, repack this again by pressing pack translate, it's the bottom uh, pack options or just shift P. And we'll wait now for this process going on. So we come up with this result and just press fit button uh, just to fit it proportionally. And the bottom fit button will uh, slightly stretch our UVs uh, to fit uh, the perf 
perfect uh, fit of the uh, UV space. Uh, it's very slightly stretching, so yeah, we can do this. Then uh, save S and uh, save it to a BX format. Then go to Blender and uh, now uh, just delete our older version. File, import FBX and import our newer one with uh, uh, our proper UVs. Just uh, delete the camera and light that uh, come up with FBX export. Go to UV editing, then uh, select uh, our objects and uh, go to edit mode to see the UVs. Now we see. Uh, our UVs are on the place and uh, perfectly arranged as we want them. Now we need to do a couple more steps uh, as we import new geometry. So let's start. Uh, select all the objects, uh, go to uh, object data panel, uh, select the normals and uh, we see that uh, they are grayed out. Uh, then uh, select the geometry data and we need to click on a clear custom uh, split normals data uh, so we will uh, delete the normals data that are going with the fbx format and just rewrite them by the native uh, normals uh, from blender now reset the transforms uh, select object apply and all transforms just to get rid of uh, unnecessary uh, transforms that uh, uh, came from Rhythm UV. Now we need to reset up our sharp edges according to our new UV seams. Here we have uh, our new UV uh, and uh, in the blue lines uh, we have uh, the display uh, the sharp edges but uh, there are uh, the order variant of them. Uh, we just need uh, to clear them out uh, and uh, set up the new sharp edges based on our new UV islands. Uh, the main rule uh, for the normal baking is uh, that the border of the UV islands uh, on the geometry uh, must have uh, in almost uh, in majority of the cases you must have the sharper edge. Now let's set up the seams from UV borders. Just go to UV and press seams from UV borders. And now we have uh, perfectly placed seams as way well as we place them in the Rhythm UV with just one click. So if we go into display and hide uh, seams, we will see you know, we are left with our old sharp edges. Just let's clear them out and make new ones. Go to edit mode and select all geometry. Right click and clear sharp so we get rid of all our sharp edges. Then go to display mode and let's display our seams. Select one seam and uh, just go uh, to select. Similar select and press seam. So we uh, select in all our seams. And with all seams selected, just press mark sharp. And uh, by doing so, uh, we will have uh, our uh, sharp edges in exact spots uh, where uh, our uh, seams are. Uh, so we will need this uh, for uh, further baking process to achieve uh, the uh, perfect results. But we uh, have to do one more step, just uh, clean up uh, some seams that uh, some sharp uh, edges that we don't want. Uh, so uh, we can left them, but uh, it is the good practice uh, to uh, just clean them up. Uh, so we uh, will have um, 
especially on cylindrical surfaces. Uh, we will have uh, this uh, nice shading without any interruptions uh, on the horizontal line of it. Uh, so it's always uh, the good practice to clean up these uh, sharp edges on the cylinders, like so. And uh, we can do this also on the flat planes, um, so they don't have uh, any impact uh, at all. So we don't need them there. And just select uh, these sharp edges and just clean them up. Now go into viewport overlays. Now we can uh, see where we have our seams and uh, where we have our sharp edges. So it's very useful to just mm, click these options uh, when you need uh, to see one or mm, another uh, type of seams. So again, just uh, clear uh, these uh, sharp edges. So we left with this. It's pretty much uh, the same process on uh, all other parts. In this case, uh, we can uh, left this inner uh, sharp edge, uh, but um, this bottom sharp edge, uh, we can uh, just clean up so, because we have uh, this nice um, cylindrical geometry. I decided to uh, clean up the inner one as well. It will now cause a huge impact. We will left uh, these ones because uh, they are located in the spot that uh, have uh, pretty uh, sharp angle. Then uh, we can uh, clean up uh, these uh, sharp edges on the edges of these handles as well. In this case, uh, these uh, forms are um, and UV islands uh, that are form uh, our edge of these handles uh, are too narrow, so uh, it's uh, I think will cause not a big effect you know, whenever we leave or just reduce uh, this hard edge. But we definitely need uh, to uh, clean up uh, these sharp edges uh, on the teapot cup just to achieve uh, this nice continuously shading. I just remind you once more, uh, we need to uh, clean up uh, these uh, sharp edges uh, almost in all cases uh, on the cylindrical objects. So when we uh, enable seam display, we have seams right here. And when we disable them, we will see that uh, sharp edges uh, Allocate it uh, and uh, just reduce in this spot. The core idea is to uh, keep uh, the cylindrical parts non divided in terms of shading, but divided uh, in terms of UV islands and seams. Uh, so uh, this approach uh, will have uh, the best results when we uh, will go uh, to further baking processes, especially uh, it's uh, very important for normal baking. Uh, so basically we almost clean up uh, all the geometry uh, that we want and we have uh, the nice placing of uh, our seams and hard edges. Uh, we can uh, uh, clean up these hard edges of on our uh, like surfacey um, and uh, spherical 
paths, but it's very optional and depends on the topology of the spherical paths. Uh, so uh, in some cases you need to uh, try uh, to bake it with uh, sharp edges and without and see uh, what the results will be better. But the general rules I already explained. I hope this tutorial uh, was helpful for you and give you uh, more uh, understanding of uh, the principles uh, of the UV unwrap uh, for uh, AAA assets and uh, preparing uh, the mesh and UVs for, for the baking process. Just have a good luck!